Good morning, folks. Big thanks to Tony Rango and everyone else who came out for the San Francisco event yesterday. So we're starting with that filament eruption from two days ago because I wholly disagree with the official CME diagnosis. NOAA thinks this thing will impact with some significant density late tomorrow, but unfortunately for that stance, the CME is almost invisible on SOHO. On Cactus, it's very faint as well. The big CMEs you see at the end were from this morning, and that blankness at the start is the CME that NOAA thinks is coming at Earth. Those big eruptions you saw were on the limb and backside. You can see the coronal ripple there. Here is the endless spiral for those huge CMEs you just saw on SOHO. Data to data, NOAA has that faint invisible CME as being stronger than the ones you could actually see on SOHO. <laughs> and even if that was true, the coronal hole stream from the departing opening will swallow that little CME without issue, but we'll come back to that topic. Now while those massive CMEs are indicative of the activity of the non-Earth facing side of the Sun, the face our star presents to us was calm flaring is low. In fact, that one there is a post-filament snap hider flare and not from a sunspot. And our analysis from yesterday holds true today. Decay. Lack of magnetic mixing in the sunspots. That's why it's so vital to classify them. And you can also see now why climatologists' use of sunspot number alone does not help you gauge solar activity. Solar wind speed in yellow continues to drop. Even the denser telemetry this morning isn't causing too much distress for Earth's magnetic shield. And we're back to the coronal holes. As this departing opening leaves the Earth facing forth, we see the North Pole extension cutting down directly center disk. A 6.6 .6 earthquake struck Taiwan right on time. USGS downgraded to 6.4 this morning. Interestingly, this is one of those rarer earth spot quakes along the convergence line from a power low at Japan. Those nuances of the earth spots were detailed in episode 35 of Deeper Look. Also had a six pointer just this morning a few minutes ago. Top link today is to some precipitation animations from Goddard Scientific Visualization Studio. There are a number of others on their site as well, I just had to pick and choose. This data is coming from the GPM satellite we were all so excited about last year. A bit back from the modeling and towards real life. This is Arkansas, but I could have chosen a number of locations for the effect from this wicked storm system sweeping across the country. Today's temperature delta illuminates the extreme swing of the climate event, where the heat and moisture rush up the east and the cold comes down to the west of the low. Here the convergence line where the two meet will be pushing the east coast tonight. They will update the warning zones around lunchtime and I recommend taking a peek. Europe. Same flow as yesterday, cutting east across the north and then diving south onto the continent. Fairly straightforward. East, northeast of Europe will see the top weather alerts tonight. Australia, also same flow as yesterday, except now we can see what the convergence line is going to. Low node there. Warning, still wrapped around Australia, and they'll be intense in New Zealand as well. We've got your current conditions and shots of our star to close. Next public event for the Mobile Observatory is PrepperCon this weekend in Salt Lake City. Eyes open. No fear. It's 2.55 a.m. on the West Coast, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.